Entire Family from WPXI, Bud Light, and Cameron Coca-Cola. Cops, tomorrow at 4 on Channel 11. The regularly scheduled program will not be seen at this time so that we may bring you the following Channel 11 Sharing Together special. It's Major League Baseball's biggest traveling party, and this year it's happening right here in Pittsburgh. It's the All-Star Game, and it brings together the best and the brightest in the game to put on a show for baseball's most devoted fans. But Pittsburgh's All-Star Party is much more than just a ball game. It's a week-long celebration of baseball that's brought fans from around the world flocking to Pittsburgh to share in the experience. Fans came together to meet their baseball heroes, bat against Major League Pitching, and spend a week totally immersed in the baseball experience. Tonight, we'll get you ready for the big game and take you behind the scenes at the biggest baseball party of the year as we step up to the plate and hit all the high points of Pittsburgh's All-Star Celebration. Hello, everyone. I'm Sam Nover, and welcome to our live broadcast from Three River Stadium, where in just about an hour from now, we will be set to go with the 65th Major League All-Star Game. I'm John Fedko, and in the next hour, we're going to take a look at the many events that have made up Pittsburgh's All-Star Celebration. For months now, Pittsburgh's been getting ready for this week-long gala. Over 100,000 visitors here in Pittsburgh, and may I add... They've added a lot to the economy of our fair city. It all culminates tonight on the field here at Three River Stadium with the All-Star Game. And, John, as you know, in the days leading up to this wonderful All-Star Game, the Pittsburgh celebration has been highlighted by the All-Star Fan Fest that began Friday at the David Lawrence Convention Center. Our news anchor man, Chris Long, you know him. He knows a good party when he sees one. Chris? Yes, John and Sam, this is it, the ultimate amusement park for baseball fans. It is Upper Deck's All-Star Fan Fest, a place totally dedicated to making every baseball fan's dreams come true. Whether it's hitting against their favorite Major League pitcher in the interactive batting cages, meeting one of the superstars of the game, shopping for baseball memorabilia and collectibles, or visiting the many exhibits on loan from the Baseball Hall of Fame, All-Star Fan Fest has it all. And during its five-day run, more than 100,000 baseball fans came here to Fan Fest. You know, this event has meant a lot for the Pittsburgh economy, and preparations for this All-Star celebration began months ago. Pittsburgh has been tuning up for months, hoping that a little baseball music will make the cash registers ring. Major League Baseball's All-Star Celebration is expected to dump $26 million into our local economy, making it one of this area's largest tourist events. And many of those dollars will be coming from outside our region. About 20% of all the people that are going to be in these events, or about a fifth of them, will be visitors, but they'll be spending about $9 million. This is FanFest, one major reason cash registers have been ringing here in Allegheny County the past few days. FanFest is billed as a theme park for baseball fans, and it lives up to that billing with dozens of hands-on activities allowing visitors to indulge their wildest baseball fantasies. Have you ever hit a home run? Yes. Mamma mia, I'm so proud of you, Ashley. Over 100,000 people visited FanFest during its five-day run. 20,000 of those visitors came from outside the region. That's a lot of hotel rooms, restaurant meals, and tourist services. The Convention and Visitors Bureau says the average out-of-town FanFest visitor will spend $200 in Pittsburgh. Ring up $4 million for our local economy. But the local tourism industry is looking beyond the short-term benefits of the All-Star Celebration. The Look At Us Now campaign was created to develop the region's image as a tourist destination. Look At Us Now events include block parties, concerts, pro volleyball tournaments, 
all designed to ensure that all-star visitors take a positive view of Pittsburgh home with them. Tourism is a $1 billion industry in Allegheny County, and the Visitors and Convention Bureau would like to see our region get a bigger slice of that very profitable pie. The hope is that economic seeds sown during the All-Star celebration will still be bearing fruit five years from now. So five years from now, we're going to be known as one of the friendliest cities. We're going to be hosting all kinds of uh, events, meetings, conventions, and special events, and we're going to be the place to be. We're going to be a bona fide destination, and this is one of our first shots at working together successfully. And a big part of the economic impact of this great event was the amount of money it took to bring FanFest here in the first place. According to the Visitors Bureau, Major League Baseball spent some $3 million to bring FanFest to Pittsburgh. This is the Major League Clubhouse. It's one of the very first things fans see when they enter FanFest. In this romanticized replica of a real big league clubhouse, fans first get to hear a pep talk from their manager. Then they're sent out to see the many sites available here at FanFest. Hey, Long, get your glove. Get out the center field. Well, sounds like the team needs me, but I'll be here throughout the show to take you behind the scenes and give you a look at what you missed if you weren't able to get down here to the convention center for FanFest. For now, though, let's go back to the stadium and John and Sam. <laughs> Thanks, Chris, and I want to see you in those batting cages later on. <laughs> now, traditionally, the All-Star break is a time for teams to assess their chances in the second half of the season. And as you know, John, the big buzz in baseball this year is really in the incredible efforts that are going on on the field. In fact, in the American League, we've got a chance for a triple crown winner. Frank Thomas having a great year, Ken Griffey Jr., and so on. Individual records certainly are in jeopardy, and so let's take a look now at the chase to rewrite baseball's record book. So you've been caught up in the frenzy of the World Cup. Changed his mind, Maxwell for three. Or took a wild rocket ride through the NBA playoffs. New York Rangers are the Stanley Cup champions! And of course, there's the Rangers finally putting an end to the dreaded hockey curse of 1940. No more curses! This is with all these distractions, maybe you haven't noticed that baseball is having its most exciting season in recent memory. Wait a minute, are you Ken Griffey Jr.? No. Sorry, didn't mean to get your hopes up. Sure, you know Ken Griffey Jr. has been challenging Roger Maris' home run record of 61. Jr. and the Giants third baseman and Matt Williams are right on pace with Maris with 33 homers at the break. White Sox first baseman Frank Thomas is also on the slugging assault to shatter the 33-year-old record. A show of power that could be attributed to today's training techniques. The top players today are as good or better than the top players have ever been. Uh, due to training techniques, uh, the ability to get themselves in shape, you know, all the new video stuff that you have to work with, all the new modern techniques to teach hitting, to teach pitching. Uh, the players are better conditioned. Of course, better conditioned than 5'6", 190-pound Hack Wilson. This stump of a man was shaped like a beer keg. But in 1930, Wilson had a banner year, slamming 54 home runs and a major league record 190 RBIs. On July 1st of this year, Houston's all-star Jeff Bagwell was already hacking away at Wilson's record with 76 ribbies. Not far behind Bagwell is the Twins' Kirby Puckett and the Dodgers' second-year catcher Mike Piazza. In 1921, the legendary Babe Ruth scored 177 runs. Today, the big hurt, Frank Thomas, has already been a real pain to opposing pitchers, scoring an aching 92 runs by the break. In fact, Thomas was eight runs ahead of Ruth at the end of June. So tonight's All-Star Game should be a showcase for some epic record breakers. Although other players have challenged those records in the past, Kent DeColby thinks there's some good reasons why this just might be a year for records. Pitching talent in the major leagues today is diluted. So they're, you know, it's not so much the top guys. The top guys are really still tough to hit. But when you get down to the seventh, eighth, ninth guys on the staff, which are getting a lot of pitching appearances now because of the way managers are using their bullpens, hitters are getting to hit off uh, softer pitching more often. And therefore, the good hitters, the really good hitters, are able to take advantage of it. Woohoo! In your face, strawberry! 
And a little later in this program, we will profile the young man who's on a great push now to eclipse the home run record of Roger Maris. I'm talking about Ken Griffey Jr. And when we return, we'll take a look at tonight's Pirate All-Star, Carlos Garcia, and we'll relive some past Pittsburgh All-Star memories. Stay with us. Pittsburgh's All-Star Celebration is brought to you in part by McDonald's. What you want is what you get at McDonald's today. By Health America. It's more than the savings. It's the doctors. By Sunoco. As always, on the driver's side. By Giant Eagle. It takes a giant to make life simple. And by Icy Ice. The freshest ice in town. Get your choice of McDonald's Big Mac, two cheeseburger, quarter pounder with cheese, or McChicken extra value meal, each just $2.99. What do you think? Oh, that looks good. Do that. What? What you want is what you get at McDonald's today. I'm a mommy, I'm a wife, um, and I'm also a doctor. And I try to treat my patients as if they were part of my family. I work hard to identify myself in the role of the patient's doctor so that they feel now that they have a doctor, not just a big health insurance company. At Health America, it's more than the savings. It's the doctors. Um, you just can't treat a patient's body. You have to take care of the spirit, too. I'd like to be able to say that I made a difference in somebody else's life. <laughs> you know, the guy that owns a station across the street is, uh, well, he's sort of a show off. He's real proud of this sporty new car he just bought. The only thing is, he wants to use the highest octane he can find, and uh, unfortunately for him, that means Sunoco Ultra 94. It's the highest octane of any major brand. Hey, they keep catching him looking over here. <laughs> well, he's still got his pride, but I've got his gasoline. Welcome back, everyone, to Pittsburgh's All-Star Celebration. Along with John Fetko, I'm Sam Nover. We're live at Three River Stadium. Can you see him over my shoulder? Moises Alou, the ex-pirate, now starring for the Montreal Expos. Uh, a little pregame warm-up. The players are out here. Not a great deal going on, but you can feel the electricity in the crowd. A reminder that when John and I are done at 8 o'clock, we'll turn it over to Bob Costas, Bob Euchre, and Joe Morgan, the NBC broadcast crew. They will take you on the rest of the way, the introduction of all the players, and the first pitch about 8.30 tonight, John. One guy who was certain to be a fan favorite is the Pirates' Carlos Garcia. The Bucko second baseman is the only Pirate player here on the All-Star uh, team for the National League, and he was surprised to make the team. He's only one season from his rookie year, and now he can call himself an all-star. Pirates Carlos Garcia is a slick-feeling second baseman with a very lively bat, but even he would admit that he's fortunate to be appearing in his first all-star game. I never expected I can make the all-star team so quickly in my career. This my second year, and, uh, and I already make it, you know. This, the first thing, you know, I have to thank this guy for giving me the opportunity to, to be around all these guys, you know, always I wanted to be. And Carlos will be there, proudly displaying his lucky number 13 jersey in today's lineup. The same number as his childhood idol, Reds All-Star Dave Concepcion. Like Concepcion, Garcia is from Venezuela, and even though he won't be playing in front of his native home crowd, Carlos finds it an honor to represent the city of Pittsburgh. I can tell you how special it is because being in the same ballpark you play every day, being this with the same fans, you know, they give the support all year long. I think it's, it's great.
The Pirate All-Star runs like a comet and gobbles up grounders like a black hole. And with his All-Star appearance, Carlos Garcia may be the next Pirates' rising star. You know, Carlos has got a chance to be a real good player. He's still maturing, but, uh, you know, he's, he is a good player now, and he's got a chance to get better. Well, I almost cried when Jimmy told me, you know, I am in the All-Star team. Of course, Carlos Garcia was not voted to this team. He was selected by Phillies manager Jim Fregosi, who's the All-Star manager. And I would think, John, for a 27-year-old baseball player appearing in his first All-Star game, this has got to be the highlight of his career. He's got to be thrilled. You know, this is the fourth All-Star game to be staged here in Pittsburgh. The first one was back in 1944 at historic Forbes Field. Now, throughout the show tonight, Chris Long is going to be taking a look at past Pittsburgh All-Star memories. And let's begin by taking a look back at that All-Star game 50 years ago. July 1944, the Allied invasion of Europe has been underway for a month, and American forces are on a slow and costly march to liberate Paris. The steel mills of Pittsburgh were working round the clock to supply the American war machine. About 5,400 of the 5,800 baseball players in the major and minor leagues traded their pinstripes for combat uniforms, including Hall of Famers Ted Williams, Yogi Berra, and Bob Feller. To bolster morale at home, Major League Baseball went on, and in 1944, the Major League All-Stars came to Forbes Field to give a war-weary nation a nine-inning break. For the first time in history, the 44 All-Star game was played under the lights. Joe McCarthy of the Yankees managed the Americans, and the Cardinals' Billy Southworth led the National League. Hank Burrowy of the Yankees got the scoring started in the second with an RBI single that put the American League up one to nothing. In the fifth, pitcher Tex Houston of the Red Sox gave up a double off the right field wall to the Cubs' Bill Nicholson to tie the score at one all. Nicholson would hit 33 homers that year to lead the majors. A single by Brooklyn Dodger Augie Gillan scored Nicholson and the route was on. The pride of Dormont, Pennsylvania, future Hall of Famer Stan Musial got the first on an error, loading the bases. Walker Cooper of the Cardinals singles to score Garan, but the Cubs' Phil Cavaretta was called out trying to score. The call brought manager Southworth out of the dugout, but to no avail, the Nationals were up 4-1. to one. The National League added two more in the seventh, and in the eighth, Stan Musial added this sacrifice fly to cap off the victory. Final score, National League 7, American League 1. Much more to come live from Three Rivers Stadium as we count down to the 1994 All-Star Game. Stay with us. Shut that crap off. Look, this is a beer commercial. Icy Ice Beer. It's not a jingle-type beer. Icy Ice is all about taste. Do you need some babes in bouncy bikinis to make you feel like a hunk of beef while you're holding a beer? Get a magazine. It's not from some ice flow in Canada. It's not some beer of the future. It's now. Icy Ice's flavor talks for itself. It's pure, unfiltered attitude in a bottle. Icy Ice, the brew with an attitude. You got a problem with that? Hear it in your mind before you start to sing it. Hear your pitch. Ready and one. There is in you the need to communicate, to speak your heart and mind, to be understood. So choose the cellular system proven to be the best, the one that in an independent test had the clearest signal, cellular one. Make yourself heard. The best system now comes with a guarantee. Call for details. It's Nissan's Monster Sales Event. With huge deals on everything in stock, everyone's saving money. So hurry in, because after July 16th, it's history. On July 15th, 20th Century Fox invites you to sit back and enjoy the ride. Because this summer, nothing is what it seems. Schwarzenegger, Jamie Lee Curtis in a James Cameron film, True Lies, rated R. Special event screening July 14th, opens July 15th everywhere. I'm attorney Edgar Snyder. We've represented over 5,000 accident victims and we're ready to help you too. So if you've been injured in an accident and need a lawyer, call us first.
Welcome back to Pittsburgh's All-Star Celebration. I'm John Fedko along with Sam Nover. We're live on the field of Three River Stadium as we're all getting ready for the 1994 Major League Baseball All-Star Game. John, by my watch, we're about an hour and eight minutes away from the first pitch if all goes as scheduled. Behind me, you might be able to see some of the National Leaguers. Ozzie Smith is out there taking infield practice, and that obviously will go on until the player introductions about eight tonight. All right, and our Chris Long has been down at Fan Fest, and that's where he is right now. It's an amusement park for baseball fanatics that's been going wild for the last five days. Chris? One. Thanks, Sam and John. I'm back now at the Upper Deck All-Star Fan Fest. You know, this has all been described by many as a heaven on earth for baseball fans, and that certainly seems to be true. I'm standing outside of a replica of the actual Baseball Hall of Fame in Cooperstown, New York. Now, here at the convention center, this replica actually stands a full three stories tall. And inside it are some 300 pieces of baseball memorabilia actually on loan from the Baseball Hall of Fame. In just a minute, we're going to take you on a guided tour of some of the baseball wonders inside. But first, we want to tell you the story of a group of Pittsburgh baseball legends enshrined at Cooperstown. They were part of two of the best baseball teams ever assembled. And at this year's All-Star Celebration, their glorious baseball careers are being honored. They are all there, the greats of the game, celebrated in the Baseball Hall of Fame in Cooperstown, New York. One of the best ever to play the game is enshrined here, but for the most part, his great deeds on the baseball field have been forgotten. He grew up on Pittsburgh's north side, where he played for 20 seasons, hitting the longest home runs anyone ever saw. But because of the color of his skin, he was never able to play in the major leagues, even though the desire to be a major leaguer burned like a fire inside him. His name, Josh Gibson. You name it and Josh would hit it. He was the most awesome here to ever God put breath in. It was unbelievable. He hit the pitch out over the center field turn. Now that's the kind of power he had. Men like Josh Gibson were heroes of America's game. But America's game has always been a reflection of the country itself. And for over 50 years, that meant the major leagues were open to whites only. But men of color found a way to triumph over that adversity. They formed their own teams, teams that were the pride of their communities. And two of the finest teams ever to play the game, white or black, were based right here in Pittsburgh. Six members of the Pittsburgh Crawfords and the Homestead Grays are immortalized in baseball's Hall of Fame. The names are legendary. Josh Gibson, Cool Papa Bell, and a legendary showman and pitcher named Satchel Page. Yo, your feet stupid. Don't want you cause your feet stupid. Mad at you cause your feet stupid. Listen, I'm telling you what I know. When he put that B-14 shoe on the mound, you had to be ready. He threw nine pitches and three strikeouts. Two of them swung, the rest of them did this way. He was throwing that ball so and I had that big old black man that was talking to him. As part of this week's All-Star celebration, a reception was held for the former Crawfords and Grays at the famous Crawford Grill, where many local players used to get together. Former Crawfords and Grays came together to be recognized by a new generation of baseball fans. But they also came together to share their memories, memories of two of the best teams to ever play the game. They was for real, and we lost a ball game. They talked about it for the next 100 or 200 miles. They want to know why did they, why did we lose it? Somebody made a mistake. And uh, it is just like almost going to a funeral when we lost a ball game. The proud history of these two great baseball teams lives on in the stories of these great athletes. They never got the recognition they deserved during their playing days. But thanks to events like this Pittsburgh reception, their legends will not be forgotten. I'm here now with Peter Clark. Peter is the registrar of the Baseball Hall of Fame in Cooperstown, New York. And Peter's going to give us a little idea here of some of the things FanFest fans were able to see, all part of the magic of Cooperstown exhibit here. Peter, what do we have here? Well, this is a locker from the 1920s, uh, the type that Babe Ruth would have used. And inside we have his uniform, his number three uniform, his glove from the 1927 season, and also his spikes down here at the bottom. My goodness, Babe Ruth was a large man, but relatively small feet. Very small feet, very small spikes. He had small feet. And this is? 
And here is his cap on the top shelf of the locker and a baseball that he has signed along with the 1927 World Champion Yankees. How about that? All here at FanFest. Let's see what else we have over here, Peter. All right. Well, this is an 1876-style uh, uniform that they would have used of wool flannel. Well, does that look hot on a summer day? It is very hot and heavy. Uh, we also have an 1890s catcher's mask and a flat-sided bat, which was used for bunting. They actually had a special bunting bat in the 1800s. Yes, they did. Uh, now, this looks almost like a modern-day batting glove. Well, it looks like a batting glove, but that was all they wore in those days, a fingerless glove used in the 1880s. So that could have been a glove for, for an outfielder. That's right. How about that? Peter Clark from the Hall of Fame. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Talk about your all-star outfields. In 1959, the all-star game returned to Pittsburgh. It was the second time it was held here. Now, in 59, the game was played at the Pirates' former home in Oakland, Forbes Field. And that year, it featured some real all-star heroics from two National League outfielders, Willie Mays and Hank Aaron. In July of 1959, the All-Stars returned to Forbes Field. The National League starting outfield featured Hank Aaron, Willie Mays, and Wally Moon. And before the game was over, Aaron and Mays would live up to their reputations as game breakers. Ted Williams led the American League squad in his second to last year in the majors. Eddie Matthews of the Braves hit 39 home runs that year, and he faced off against the AL's Rocky Colavito, who knocked 42 dingers in 59. Vice President Richard Nixon was on hand to throw out the first ball and get the All-Star game underway. Everyone came to Forbes Field to see the power hitters swing the big lumber. And Matthews did not keep them waiting long, putting this first inning pitch into the right field seats. In the fourth inning, the Tigers' Al Kaline retaliated, launching a Louverdet breaking ball into the Ivy in left center. It tied the score at one all. Pirate pitcher Elroy Face found himself in trouble in the top of the eighth, with the National League squad ahead 3-1, Nelly Fox singled. Face lost Harvey Keene to a walk. Then, after a Vic Power single, Ted Williams came up, appearing in his 15th All-Star game and drew an intentional pass. Oriole catcher Gus Triando sent Face to the showers by doubling in two more runs. The Forbes Field crowd began looking worried as the American League went up 4-3. But in the bottom of the eighth, the National League superstars got the Pittsburgh crowd on its feet. Hank Aaron hit an RBI single to tie the game. And then the next batter, the say hey kid himself, Willie Mays, tripled, driving home Aaron with what would turn out to be the winning run. Final score, National League 5, American League 4. All right, Chris, thank you very much. Joining us now live here at Three River Stadium, a gentleman who's never played one game in Major League Baseball, but I can assure you he's made a Major League contribution to this All-Star Week in Pittsburgh. His name is Danny Glover. His movie, the Disney movie, Angels in the Outfield, premiered here in front of, what, 35,000 at Three Rivers on Sunday. What an unbelievable situation. I, I couldn't Don't forget it. your mic, sir. I couldn't believe it. I saw it for the first time then and it was enormous. I had never seen anything like that. I mean, I had never seen a movie on, on, on screen like that, yeah. screens like that, but it was just enormous. Did it lose any of its intimacy, Danny? I mean, you know, what you accomplish, you know, when you when you make a movie Gosh. like that, did it come off to a vast audience here? Well, I think, I thought it did. And the fact that, that they, at the end of it, or, or at, almost at the end of the film, the audience got up and began to do the wave. They were doing the angel wave, began to flap them like angels, you know. It was incredible, you know. Did you enjoy Tony Danza? I mean, you guys got along well together. Tony's wonderful, you know. A very generous, very warm man, very wonderful man. I yeah. want to talk to you about a quote I read in USA Today mm. in which you uh, talked about Roberto Clemente. I don't have uh, to tell you he's as special a man as ever lived in this city. Tell me uh, about what Clemente meant to you. I mean, whenever I think of R Roberto Clemente, I, I get a certain kind of calm and, sh and at the same time chill. It's such a see such a revelation you know I knew about who Clemente was in 1972 of course I'm almost 47 years old yeah. so I knew about who he was his contribution to kids his contribution to those who need and so when I when I every time I see a picture of him and every time there's a moment that I catch him I find myself just gazing in his eyes in some way trying to see his eyes you know they say your eyes are your mirror to your soul you saw it's so statue. such a wonderful did you check the yes statue? I did it's, it's beautiful Isn't that incredible it's like this other beautiful thing? beautiful well I know yeah. you give a lot but, of your time to but, youth but, but I think he was an inspiration in a way when you know and, and, I, and I harken back to that you know athletes 
who, who I mean, what's, what's 3,000 hits, you know, in, in the yeah, whole history, man? What right. is it, in a sense, you know? But those who give of themselves to their community, they give to, to the world in need, those are the ones that are my heroes. Well, you know? I know you do that too, Danny, and we can't tell you how thrilled we are. I know it's yeah. been like, you've been like a kid in the candy shop this yeah. week yeah. with the baseball all-stars. I'm taking more pictures. I, got, I, I, I know, I saw more. you running around here yesterday. <laughs> Danny Glover, star yeah. of Angels in the outfield, our special guest, back with more, live from Three Rivers in just a moment. All right. Toss me the ball. King Griffey Jr.'s always play hardball. That's why King Griffey Jr. presents Major League Baseball as wall-to-wall -wall action. Only on the Super NES Sports Network. It's the one game that plays in Ken's League. Let's see you hit. They walked the earth millions of years ago before man even came to be. But now even you can stand in the presence of these prehistoric creatures and feel what it's like to be stalked by dinosaurs. Take a step back in time at SeaWorld's new monster marsh before these creatures disappear again. Nothing beats a great day, day Chevrolet. The day to remember is the dealer you know who's gonna save you money in a day that you go. Nothing beats a great day service you'll get make it today you'll come out way ahead nothing beats a great day day chevrolet nothing beats a great day day chevrolet a great day i need a home a home cooking i need a home a home cooking while you're working up an appetite we're cooking up a home cooked meal boston chicken Juicy oven roasted chicken with all the fresh fixings. Great meals for under four dollars a person. What I want. Home for a home cooked meal anytime, Boston chicken. That's home cooking. Toss me the ball. King Griffey Jr.'s always play hardball. That's why King Griffey Jr. presents Major League Baseball as wall-to-wall -wall action. Only on the Super NES Sports Network. It's the one game that plays in Ken's League. Let's see you hit. Welcome back to Pittsburgh's All-Star Celebration. I'm John Fetko along with Sam Nover. Live inside Three River Stadium, we are now less than an hour away from the first pitch of the 1994 All-Star Game, the American League taking infield uh, warm-ups behind us. Yeah, John, as you well know, the highlight of any Major League Baseball player's career is a trip to the All-Star Game. In the 61-year history of the Pittsburgh Pirates, 60 of them have gone on to play in an All-Star Game. Some have done well, some have not done quite so well. But the fact remains, to each and every one of them, it was a great honor. The All-Star Game is our national pastime summer showcase, an event that transcends all the elements of sports, the pageantry, the tradition, and the moments are legendary. One such moment came in 1954 for Pirates pitcher Bob Friend. He had held the American League scoreless for the first two innings, but had to pitch his way out of a jam in the third. The lineup on the American League was Mickey Mantle, Bear, Maris, and Ted Williams and that group. It's a pretty strong hitting ball club, and they had managed to load the bases uh, and with two out, and Ted Williams was a hitter. And I worked a count to three and two and threw him a hard curveball inside, and he swung and missed for the third out. Friend threw three scoreless and was a winning pitcher as the National League hung on to win seven to three. There were two All-Star games in 1960, and eight Buckos cracked the lineup for the National League. And his friend remembers, those games proved to be a preview of the Pirates' most memorable season. It was like a home week uh, with the Pirates in 60. We'd, we'd had a great time, you know. We knew we were, we were going to be right in that pennant race in 1960, so we, that was special for us. I won the game in Kansas City, and Vernal all started in Yankee Stadium and, and won that game. So. We had, uh, of, the, of the two games played, we had two winning Pirate pitchers. In 1972, the Pirates' Steve Blass pitched in his first All-Star game and was thrilled to have battery mates like the Reds' Johnny Bench. Bench came up to me because he knew I was going to pitch a second inning. He said, uh, what signs do you want to use? I said, why use any, Johnny? You've always known what's coming. <laughs> 
The first All-Star game was televised in the 1950s, and ever since, All-Stars have basked in the glow of a huge national audience. Everyone, that is, but Steve Blass. Technical difficulties turned his only All-Star appearance into 10 minutes of static. You know, I had to go home at the end of the, the season and convince all my family and friends in Connecticut that I really was there and I really did pitch. And they said, well, we didn't see. I, I understand that, but it really did happen. I was there. Then they wanted details, so I had to cut them off at that point because I didn't have a great inning. Glass gave up one run in that second inning, but he was taken off the hook by the hometown heroics of Atlanta's Henry Aaron. When he came up, he got an ovation, and then when he hit the ball over the wall, uh, the people just, they, they just lost it. And, it. and it was great. It, was, well, it gave you goosebumps to just uh, be around that, that, that kind of energy. The National League would win the game in the 10th inning by a score of 4-3. to three. As fans, we can all conjure up images of our favorite pirate from All-Star Games past. From the humorous Willie Stargell's flying bat, to the spectacular Dave Parker's MVP performance in 1979. But for the player, it's a sheer thrill to enter the same locker room with the game's greats. You know, to walk in that room and look around and see all these really, really good players there. And I think it gives you a sense of, you know, you've arrived. You really have. It's, a, it's like a little badge because now you have been chosen to play on the same team with these really, really good players. And that means you must be pretty good yourself. And it's, it's a real good ego boost, and it you know, kind of gives you a feeling of accomplishment. Welcome back to Pittsburgh's All-Star Celebration. John and I are live at Three Rivers Stadium, where in about 20 minutes from now, NBC will take over and begin their broadcast. You'll be able to see the game live right here on Channel 11. We've got a lot more of Pittsburgh's All-Star Celebration coming up. Don't go away. I've been telling you about our patented ice brewing machine that takes Coors Arctic ice to minus four degrees centigrade, colder than any other beer. And I've been telling you we're the only brewer who ships our ice beer cold and sells it cold. That's because... If you don't make it cold... And if you don't ship it cold and sell it cold... How can you call it ice beer? New Arctic ice from Coors. Nothing's bolder, nothing's colder. Why? It's just like a Toyota. Why do so many others compare their cars to Toyota? Compared to a Toyota Camry. More than a Corolla. Perhaps it's because Toyota sets the standard for superior quality and lasting value. And they expect you to think their cars are better than a Toyota because they're cheaper. Why would anyone believe that? Toyota. The cars worth owning. The dealers worth seeing. Simply the best. the health care benefits meetings are today. Oh, that's right. Are you going with an HMO? I think so, but I don't want to give up my doctor. Yeah, or have to go all the way across town to go to a hospital. You know, you might not have to do either. I just had my meeting. They've got an HMO that's got more doctors and more hospitals than any other. Well, sounds good. Which one? Keystone. You know, the one from Blue Cross and Blue Shield. Sounds real good. Yeah, we should check it out. Definitely. Is together. Tonight on Channel 11 News Nightbeat, I-Team 11 blew the lid off an all-star ticket scalper on the inside. Joe, we know you did it. We've got video. Our report made headlines and started the entire city talking. There's going to be a genuine effort to see it never happen again. Tonight, we put them to the test again. Find out how much cash you have to cough up to sit behind the plate. I-Team 11 investigates. Tonight, after the game, watch Channel 11 News Nightbeat. More news, more often. In the third inning of the first All-Star game ever held, Babe Ruth swatted the first All-Star game home run as he led the American League to victory 4-2. And welcome back again live to Three River Stadium. As perhaps you can see behind me, the grounds crew has now taken over. Players have gone back to their dressing rooms. And the next time you see them, John, I think we'll be ready for the player introductions. And the crowd is buzzing here at Three River Stadium. And there's been a lot of buzzing all year about one of the All-Stars here, Seattle's Ken Griffey Jr., who's having a fabulous season. We're halfway through the 94 season. He already has 33 homers. He's ahead of the record pace of Roger Maris's uh, record for homers in one season, 61. Now, Griffey Jr. obviously comes from great baseball bloodlines. His father, Ken Griffey Sr., was a great star. And 
Ken Griffey Jr.'s town is, quite frankly, scary. Hmm. Ken Griffey Jr. was only 10 years old when his father hit this home run off Tommy John to become the MVP of the 1980 All-Star Game. Now, 14 years later, it's Junior's turn to give the All-Star Game a shot of Griffey family values. For over 20 years, it's been every Major League pitcher's worst nightmare. Ken Griffey at the plate with the game on the line. With the Cincinnati Reds, Ken Griffey Sr. hit over 300, and his son has become a veritable Frankenstein's monster at the plate, swatting home runs like Godzilla swatting airplanes. Every time Junior picks up a bat, pitchers quake in fear. All in all, it's scarier than a walk through the cemetery at midnight. Be afraid. Be very afraid. But becoming a chip off the old block wasn't easy. It took a lot of hard work for Junior to fill his father's terror-inspiring footsteps, and Dad insisted he start early. My dad gave me a decision, you know, at age 15. He said, do you want to be a professional baseball player? Do you want to be, you know, the average kid on the street? And I said, well, I want to play baseball. Said, well, this is what you're going to have to do. And from day one, from that point on, and that was my stride. Coming into tonight's All-Star Game, Ken Griffey Jr. is on a home run pace to break Roger Maris's single season home run record of 61. It has the baseball world buzzing and it's left opposing managers with only one official comment. I want the ball hit to me and I want to be the man in, in the situations that's tough because everybody's looking for me to to do well and it just takes a lot of the pressure off other guys and I know what I have to do. Griffey family values like father like son only better. All baseball eyes will be on Ken Griffey Jr. following the all-star break as he attempts to do his father one better and write his name in the baseball record books and woe to the pitcher who stands in his way. One lasting effect of this all-star game here in Pittsburgh will be felt on our baseball diamonds in our city for years to come. It's a program called BIG, B-I-G, standing for Baseball is Great. As our Channel 11 news anchor David Johnson tells us, it's a program spearheaded by Roberto Clemente Jr. and it's designed to bring baseball back to urban neighborhoods. Playing a game of hoops. It's a way of life, especially for inner city kids. Here on the concrete, today's generation dream of becoming the next Akeem Olajuwon or Patrick Ewing, star players. But thanks to a local program called RBI, urban youngsters are returning in increasing numbers to the sport that shaped the dreams of their fathers and grandfathers, baseball. I like about playing a field, like how you catch the ball, and like, you involved in mostly every play. RBI stands for reviving baseball in the inner cities. Um, what they're trying to do is give young minority children something to do. Um, as you see, I mean, if they got something to do, then they're not in the streets, they're not in gangs. I mean, that helps with their, get their priorities straight when it comes towards academics. Listen up, listen up, listen up, listen up, listen up. Everybody sitting on that bench, I want you to be ready. When I holler, warm up, get up and warm up, okay? Eight teams make up Pittsburgh's RBI program, each team from a different area of the city. The aspiring athletes are brought together by their newly developed love of America's pastime. But along the way, they learn important lessons in getting along with one another. We, what we do is in a many of these kids to show them going from one neighborhood to the other, they're all the same. You can play together, work together, and live together. And, and, you know, and we keep them out of the street. The Monarchs, Barons, Crawfords, and Grays. Names of teams of the old Negro baseball leagues. These same names are now being used to showcase a new generation of ball players, potentially some Roberto Clementes who are learning important lessons. Dedication, sportsmanship, lessons in life that go far beyond baseball. And thanks to Pittsburgh's RBI program, the sounds of a bat connecting for a long home run once again echoing through Pittsburgh's urban neighborhoods.
The excitement growing here at Three River Stadium. The players have left the field. They're now in the locker room getting prepared for the All-Star Game. Back with more live from Three Rivers as John and I count you right now to the All-Star Game. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Now when calling from home, you can save 10% on toll calls within the 412 area code just by dialing 10 ATT first. Just dial 10 ATT plus the number. 10 ATT, dial it and no save. need to sign up, no monthly fee. 10 ATT, dial it and save. Your true voice. Weird Alec Gates, mom and dad get what it takes to create this great playroom for their future Hall of Famer. Let's go back to square one. Builder Square can help you get even the biggest job off the drawing board. All the cabinetry, paneling, trim and molding, whatever you're remodeling, remember who has it all from wall to wall at great square deal prices. The better the plan, the better the project. Builder Square. It'll get you squared away. When you win the Pennsylvania Lottery's Cash 5, we'll give you all the cash all at once in one lump sum. All you have to do is pick it up. Cash five. All the cash, all at once. When you win the Pennsylvania Lottery's Cash Five, you'll get all the cash all at once in one lump sum. It's a lot, but you can handle it. Cash five. All the cash, all at once. <laughs> Yeah, the guy that owns a station across the street is, uh, well, he's sort of a show-off. Real proud of this sporty new car he just bought. Only thing is, he wants to use the highest octane he can find, and uh, unfortunately for him, that means Sunoco Ultra 94. It's the highest octane of any major brand. Hey, I keep catching him looking over here. <laughs> well, he's still got his pride, but I've got his gasoline. In the 1941 All-Star Classic, Ted Williams came up with an All-Star memory. With two out and two on in the bottom of the ninth, the American League was down 5-4. to four. But not for long, as Williams put one in the seats to win the game 7-5. to five. And welcome back once again to Pittsburgh's All-Star Celebration. John and I remain live on the field at Three River Stadium, getting ready for the 1994 Major League All-Star Game. And let's check in again with Channel 11 News anchor Chris Long, who's soaking in the festivities yes. over at FanFest. Chris, you found those batting cages yet? Okay, by popular demand, here I am in the batting cage here at FanFest. Now, don't worry, Mr. Fedko, I'm going to face off against pitcher Roger Clemens. But I've taken this guy downtown before, and you know what? I think I can do it again. But this is just one of the interactive exhibits available to the baseball fans who came out to FanFest. On a video screen directly in front of me, I see Clemens pitching. And just at the moment he releases the pitch, an actual baseball emerges from a hole in the screen, giving me a real sense that I'm actually batting against Roger Clemens pitching. Now, let's see how I do. Oh. Oh. Well, I always was kind of a punch and Judy hitter anyway. Hey, that was fun, but you know, this was not the only interactive exhibit available to baseball fans out here at FanFest. It was the bottom of the ninth inning. Our team was up by one run, but the bases were loaded. The call went out to the bullpen. A new pitcher headed for the mound. The wily veteran, Long, Chris Long. Here at the bullpen, baseball fans get the chance to live out their dreams and test their pitching prowess. Never being one to shrink from a challenge, I took the mound. Okay, I'm going to take the mound here at the bullpen and see if I can throw a few strikes. Let's see how we're going to do. I don't think Jim Leland wants me on the staff, but here we go. Ball one, I'm afraid, high and outside. Come on, I got to bring it down a little bit. Two balls, no strike. I never was a control pitcher, Sam. Here we go. I got a 3-0 count, I think, right here. All right, I got to bring it home right here now. Watch the mitt. That time I had it. 
All right, I'm going to get him right here, I think. Uh, and they tell you walks will kill you. And, of course, after a tough day out on the mound, mowing down the Major League's best hitters, I did what any Major Leaguer would do. I sat down to admire my baseball trading card. Hey, but wait a minute. I don't even have a trading card. But you know what? Here at FanFest, that's not a problem. So now my baseball experience is pretty much complete. I'm kind of ready to sit back and enjoy tonight's ball game. You know, it's been 20 years since the All-Star game came here to Pittsburgh, and that game back in 1974 was the first All-Star game ever played at Three Rivers Stadium. 1974 in Three Rivers Stadium, and it was a tough day for All-Star catchers. With the National League ahead 1-0, the American League squad put runners on first and third. When fleet-footed Rod Carew took off for second, catcher Johnny Bench threw the ball into center field, scoring Thurman Munson and sending Carew to third. Dick Allen of the White Sox singled in Carew, and the American League was up 2-1. to one. Pirate All-Star Ken Brett took the mound in the fourth and pitched two scoreless innings. The Red Sox' Louis Tion took the mound for the American League, but his tricky pitching motion did not fool Johnny Bench, who singled in the fourth. Bench was followed by the toy cannon, Jim Wynn, who singled back up through the box. That's the boy, Jimmy! Come on, Jimmy! Come on, John! Come on, come on! Get over here! Right here, John! Right here, right here! That's the boy. You gotta hit that ball. Got nobody out now. Tag up on a fly ball halfway on the shoulder. That's a boy. Boy, I tell you, he got some motion. You gotta see him a little bit. He's used to Steve Garvey's double drove in bench and sent Wynn to third. Dodger third baseman Ron Say, known affectionately as the Penguin for his unique running style, drove in Wynn to make the score three to two. In the bottom of the fifth, Lou Brock wrapped a single to right and then brought the Pittsburgh crowd to its feet by stealing second base. Catcher Thurman Munson's throw skipped into center field and Brock streaked to third. Come on, Lucy! Stand up, baby. Joe Morgan's sacrifice fly scored Brock. Another catcher's miscue had resulted in a run. With the National League ahead 6-2, to two, it was pitcher Raleigh Fingers making it tough on the catcher. Fingers' wild pitch skipped past Thurman Munson, allowing the Cubs' Don Kessinger to score. And that's the way it ended July 23rd, 1974 at Three River Stadium, National League 7, American League 2. Well, that pretty well wraps it up from FanFest now, so order me up some nachos and maybe a cool one, and I'm headed down to the stadium. Let's send it back to Three Rivers now and John and Sam. All right, Christopher, nice job out there. Uh, we're going to head for our seats, but as we do, it reminds me that uh, he's stealing some of your shtick there. You better be careful. Nice job, Chris, but <laughs> you haven't hit the big leagues until you've been hit by boxes on skylights, so <laughs> don't get too cocky. We've got much more coming up on Pittsburgh's All-Star Celebration. Stay with us. That box guy isn't around, Arissi Selby. No, no. Uh, I don't see him. I don't see him. <laughs> Introducing new Giant Eagle Pro Series film. Look at that color, look at that light. Look at that sunset so clear and bright. Ooh, it's such a beautiful sight. I get the picture now. 100, 200, 400 speed. Double your money back, guaranteed. Good as the national brands, it's true. But it costs less, and it's brand new. Giant Eagle Pro Series film. So simple for you. Okay, one more time. I'm talking about Icy Ice Beer. Listen, no jingles, no movie stocks. That's right, Icy Ice is a true ice beer. How's it made? Ooh, what are you gonna be, a brewmeister? Come on, what do you want from a beer? Technology or taste? Icy Ice is all about taste. Hey, if you feel better if a movie star drinks the same beer as you, that's great. This 
is Icy Ice. If you want a movie star, rent a video. Icy Ice, the brew with an attitude. Any problems? For me, there's nothing better than helping a sick kid get well. I try very hard to keep parents informed and to keep in touch with them and let them know what's going on and what I'm thinking. Stupid questions, uh, I don't think there's any such thing. Sometimes, sometimes the answer's easy, sometimes it's not so easy, but I'm always there to try to answer them. So I, I think they know that if, if I tell them it's okay, it's okay. Hey, what? We got all these extra value meals, and they just gave us one price. Uh, put it on the Big Mac. Take it down. Wait a second. Maybe it goes in a quarter pot with cheese. Take it up. Get your choice of McDonald's Big Mac, two cheeseburger, quarter pounder with cheese, or McChicken extra value meal, each just $2.99. What do you think? Oh, that looks good. Do that. What? What you want is what you get at McDonald's today. Pittsburgh's All-Star Celebration has been brought to you in part by Giant Eagle. It takes a giant to make life simple. By Sunoco, as always, on the driver's side. By Health America, it's more than the savings, it's the doctors. By McDonald's, what you want is what you get at McDonald's today. And by Icy Ice, the freshest ice in town. Well, John, our generous producer has seen fit to give us about 45 seconds for our own opinion. I'll give you 25 of it. Go ahead, buddy. Well, I'll tell you what. I'm looking forward to the pregame introductions. I think it's going to be very dramatic. Jim Leland is here as a coach. He's a coach for manager Jim Fergosi of the Phillies, and I think this crowd of 60,000 is going to give him a very dramatic standing ovation. I regret to say that I think the American League is going to have another big year. I think the electricity in the crowd is an anticipation of Ken Griffey Jr., and uh, young Mr. Thomas hitting a few out of the ballpark. So we'll see. Uh, we're about done from here, John and I, but uh, to carry on right up through the game, Bob Costas, Bob Euchre, and Joe Morgan of NBC Sports. And, of course, you'll see that game live here on Channel 11. So for my partner, John Fetko, I'm Sam Dover. Say goodnight to the folks. All right, well, Sam and I will be on after the game on the night beat, so stay tuned for that. Good night, everybody. Thanks Enjoy the game. Thanks for joining us. Refreshing ice cream. Summer just wouldn't be summer without it. Taste summer! At 6 o'clock, Channel 11 News gives you a choice. A choice for investigative reports. I-Team 11's dedicated team of investigative reporters follows the stories you suggest. Blowing the whistle on government waste and red tape. Confronting businesses doing your family wrong. Informing you of scams on the rise in your neighborhood. When you make your choice for a 6 o'clock newscast, consider I-Team 11 Investigative Reports on Channel 11 News at 6.
January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. January, February, March, April, May, June, July. <gasps> Introducing the new Diet Coke can. It just might change your life forever. <sighs> January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. Doing my job. Right. Bad boys, bad boys. What you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? He did the right thing by telling somebody. Cops, tomorrow at 4, followed by A Current Affair on Channel 11. This is the NBC Television Network. Mantle hit the high fly ball. It's deep left center field. It's way out there. It's way In a out different there. time, the first commissioner of baseball said nearly every boy builds a shrine to some baseball hero. And before that shrine, a candle always burns. The connection to baseball usually begins in childhood, when imagination operates most freely, when the feel of the game captures you when mimicking the mannerisms of your favorites is part of what it means to be a fan. And even for those who would one day make it to the All-Star Game, a word of encouragement in childhood still resonates. How could it not, when it was said to a 12-year-old by the splendid splinter, Ted Williams. It was really a turning point in my career when you have probably the greatest hitter, one of the greatest hitters in the history of the game, telling you that you hit the ball just as hard, if not harder, than he was at the same age. When I was a kid growing up in Chicago, I used to dream that I was Ernie Banks to hit a home run to win the All-Star game. And it happened last year at Camden Yards. For Ken Griffey Jr., there was a baseball influence close at hand, his dad. My brother and I, we were running in the outfield, and we raced. We had a ball, uh, and we just ran, ran straight down the right field line to his position. And, you know, everybody stood up and clapped. More than any other sport, baseball is about history, about comparisons. Every great player measured against those who have gone before, those who set the standards, and those who strive now to surpass them. The names that echo down the corridors of time, and those whose time is now. Those whose names may be forever linked with men they never knew. Those who'll be watched tonight by some kid somewhere who will someday stand in their place. The All-Star Game is next. In the Steel City, temperature right now 85 degrees as we're getting set for the 65th renewal of baseball's All-Star Game. The fourth time the city of Pittsburgh has played host, the first two times at Old Forbes Field. And now this is the second time here at Three Rivers Stadium where All-Stars like Willie Stargell and Roberto Clemente played at least a portion of their Hall of Fame careers. Hello, everybody. I'm Bob Costas. Welcome to the All-Star Game. Bob Euchre and Joe Morgan will join me for the call momentarily. This should be a respite from all the peripheral problems that surround baseball. It is the mid-season classic, and let's hope that it is the middle of a full season. And in truth, baseball should be enjoying a renaissance on the field because right now, the game is graced by the presence of the greatest collection of young stars in decades. We're looking forward to seeing them perform tonight. We'll be back, as I said, with the call momentarily. But right now, to take you through the pregame festivities, some interviews, and the introduction of the lineups, let's go to our new colleague, Greg Gumbel, who's down on the field at Three Rivers Stadium. Take it, Greg. 
Bob thank you and good evening everyone the sun will not set here in Pittsburgh for another 45 minutes or so but there are plenty of stars out already when we come back we will talk with two of the brightest stars in the American League galaxy Ken Griffey Jr. and Frank Thomas when we continue from Pittsburgh after these words from your local station. Hi, I'm Martin Short, and you know, I love sporting events. Not just because of the sports, but because of the food you get to eat, like hot dogs and hamburgers, and of course my favorite, the slushy. You know, interesting story. I went, rain freeze! Martin oh. Short is coming to NBC Tuesdays this fall. Way too cold. Ugh. Get into the snow! At Seven Springs, the fun doesn't stop when the snow melts. So come on up, enjoy our mountain of fun all year long. Getting away will give you and your meeting a whole new perspective. In fact, our mountain can turn problems into molehills. Call today for your complete mountain meeting kit, because at Seven Springs, the fun doesn't stop. Tonight on Channel 11 News Nightbeat, I-Team 11 blew the lid off an all-star ticket scalper on the inside. Joe, we know you did it. We've got video. Our report made headlines and started the entire city talking. This going to be a genuine effort to see it never happens again. Tonight, we put them to the test again. Find out how much cash you have to cough up to sit behind the plate. I-Team 11 investigates. Tonight, after the game, watch Channel 11 News Nightbeat. More news, more often. Take it up! Get your choice of McDonald's Big Mac, two cheeseburger, quarter pounder with cheese, or McChicken extra value meal, each just $2.99. What do you think? Oh, that looks good. Do that. What? What you want is what you get at McDonald's today. On the day he goes to jail, Jeff Gillooly talks on the next A Current Affair. The 1994 All-Star Pre-Game Show is brought to you by Sharp View Cam, the new movement in camcorders. And by Sprint, we've got everything you need, local, long distance, and cellular, to let you be there now. The city of Pittsburgh all a glitter for hosting the All-Star Game, and it has done a fine job this week. Just a few moments ago down here on the field, Meatloaf, who will be singing the national anthem on the left, and yes, that is Phil Rizzuto, honorary American League captain on the right, separated at birth. We don't think so. Welcome back to Pittsburgh, everyone.